Um, just a couple of proclamations, which I'm not going to go through and read it all, but, um, you know, it starts off in the name of Jesus. I curse the spirit of pride and it goes on down unclean spirits, tormenting spirits. Um, you know, I command you demon of pride to let her go. Various proclamations that CC was getting on behalf of some of the people in the body. And while we recognize we can't deliver people from demons or familiar spirits that they have basically allowed to live with. We can't deliver them. They have to deliver themselves. But this word of knowledge that really was being reflected by CC in a prayer in several proclamations and a prayer is, is kind of a guide. And, and if, if you went through the scripture, you'd see all of this is justified in scripture, you know, dealing with demons, dealing with spirits. And so we were talking to some, some folks this morning about this. And uh, I wanted to just share this scripture with you just briefly. This comes out of second Corinthians 10 and starts in verse three. And Paul says, though we walk in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare. And by the way, our warfare is not saying you Corinthians and us. When Paul says our warfare, he's talking about the apostles, the ministry. And, and I want to digress a little bit there because the ministry of Jesus Christ is to actually bring God's people into greater revelations and understanding and truths of things that they may know in their heart or have in their heart, but they're not connected to. And so the ministry is there to lead and to guide and to reflect and to kind of kickstart God's people into the things of God that do reside in their spirit. The Lord has shown it to them. They've probably read it a dozen hundred times in the Bible, but they haven't connected to it. It kind of goes back to the things I said, you know, one of the greatest depressions in the ministry is that people don't do what the word says to do. People don't listen to do. They listen to hear. They may listen to write things down. They may listen to study later, but they don't listen to do. And there's a big disconnect that happens there. When you listen with the intention of doing what you hear, it's a game changer. So the ministry, Paul says, you know, we, the ministry, we don't walk after the flesh. We don't war after the flesh. Our, the weapons of our warfare, the ministry, are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of spiritual strongholds, demons, spiritual strongholds, spirits, casting down imaginations, and every high thing, casting down thoughts, reasonings of the mind that juggle the truth of God versus the truth of mankind, truth of God versus the truth of maybe the laws of the land, you know, um, that goes on continually in everybody, including Christians. This admonition is to cast down these reasoning thoughts that basically exalt themselves against the knowledge of God, against the full discernment, knowing who the Lord is, and bring into captivity every thought, all your reasonings, your human reasonings, bring them into captivity to the word. It says to the obedience of Jesus, but what's that? Well, it's the obedience of the word. We have the word. And uh, sometimes we can't discern what the Lord is saying to us because 
we might be listening to our former education. We might be listening to the things that we have learned and, and basically philosophies of life that we've hung on to our whole life, which are familiar spirits. And so we can't trust ourselves. We can't, it says the heart of man is deceitfully, deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? Well, you can know it. But what does that mean? It means the heart, the intentions, the motivations of man's heart are continually wicked. You have to judge your motives. You have to judge your intentions. Why do you do the things that you do? Why do you learn the things you learn? Why do you study what you study? Why do you look at what you look at? This, you have to take on spiritual judgment and bring into captivity all of these contrary reasonings and thoughts, high opinions, former education. You have to bring them into the obedience of the word. And I'll just tell you, I think one of the major disconnects that I have seen in my 50 years now walking in the spirit is that people don't have a relationship with the word or the relationship that they have is curriculum, formal education, study, maybe studying Greek, Hebrew, dead languages, history, times, places, events that the scripture talks about, but not really getting into the, and, and and hanging on to and getting revelation into the principles of scripture. We live by principle. We don't live by emotion and we don't live by former for, or uh, formal education. And it says, have a readiness in you to revenge all of your disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. This is a kind of a mystery. What I've noticed is people lightly esteem sin. They lightly esteem their familiars. They say, well, yeah, this is a familiar. I'm praying against it and I'm going to change my mind. But there's no revenge against it. There's no setting up warfare against it. There's no confessing it to your brothers and sisters. I, most people don't even pray about it. They don't even walk and pray and say, Jesus, I see that this familiar spirit has been leading me all my life. In Jesus' name, I rebuke it. I cast it away. You spirit of pride or whatever it is, name that spirit. You cast it out. You tell it to leave. You know, they come in uninvited and they won't leave unless you kick them out. You have to set up a standard. You have to be ready to avenge all of your former disobedience when you become obedient. You gotta walk in the spirit, you gotta take on a spirit of judgment, and you have to be willing to do battle. Spiritual battle. The kingdom of God suffers violence. Yeah, the kingdom of God suffers violence. And those that are so pressurized in the kingdom We'll take it by force. So um, just a little admonition. Just you can read that yourself. It's 2 Corinthians 10, 3, three through 6. And um, you got to you gotta not just get in the battle, but you got to stay in the battle. And you got to realize these spirits don't die. And most of the time, they'll leave you if you sincerely in your heart imploring the name of Jesus Christ by the spirit, they will leave. They have to in the name of Jesus, if you're sincere, if you're sincere in what you do. But that doesn't mean they're not gonna come back and see if there's any opening for them to come back. So you have to walk in judgment. You know, our familiars will always make us halt. That's what the scripture says. Your familiars make you halt. So. You got to be wiser than that. I think touching these things you say are these principles in my own life. Wisdom is right in front of the face of the man who has understanding. Yeah. A lot of the issues of life in my heart during the day solved all my past when I started grabbing hold of what the Spirit was saying in the day. Well, we can't set this stuff on the back burner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
you know, we, we've got to walk in faith and walk in the spirit. That's what it means. The man that walks in the spirit will overcome and not fulfill the deeds of the flesh. But you have to walk in the spirit. Anyway, amen.